Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. This broadcast is brought to you on this station every Sunday at this time. Thank you for listening. Lord Jesus Christ, be present now. Our hearts in true devotion bow. Our spirits send with grace divine. And let thy truth service now begins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by your great goodness, mercifully look upon your people that we may be governed and preserved evermore in body and soul. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lutheran Radio Choir will sing hymn 149, Come to Calvary's Holy Mountain. Come to Calvary's Holy Mountain, sinners ruined by the fall. Hear a pure and healing fountain, falls to you to me to Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and he bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Glory be to God on high. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our first reading for this, the fifth Sunday after Lent, comes from Hebrews, the fifth chapter. For every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sin. He can deal gently with the ignorant and the wayward since he himself is beset with weakness. Because of this, he is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins, just as he does for those of the people. 
and no one takes this honor for himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not exalt himself to be made a high priest, but was appointed by him who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and being made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all who obey him being designated by God a high priest after the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel on which today's sermon is based is from the 10th chapter of St. Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came up to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What do you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand, one at your left, in your glory. Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink? Or to be baptized with the baptism with which I am baptized? And they said to him, We are able. And Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. And when the ten heard it, they began to be indignant at James and John, and Jesus called them to him, and he said to them, You know that those who are considered rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their great ones exercise authority over them. But it shall not be so among you. But whoever would be great among you must be your servant, and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many." This is the gospel of our Lord. Let us together confess our holy Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. After the choir sings hymn 55, Come, Thou Precious Ransom, Come, Pastor Robert Gable will speak on the theme, Not So Among You. Come, thou precious ransom, come, only hope for sinful mortals. Come, O Savior of the world, open our to thee, O mortals. Come, thy beauty let us see, and just the 
Christ. Amen. Some days you move two steps forward and other days you feel like you're moving three steps back. This must have been one of those days for Jesus. The glory of the Transfiguration Mountain is fast becoming a distant memory. The shadow of the cross is fast approaching. And the, te the tension that must have already started is becoming palpable with every step toward Jerusalem. And now the disciples, James and John, feel it too. And they feel that now it is their time to make their move while such moves can still be made for they are certain that they have waited for this moment. They have anticipated this moment. They have plotted for this moment, and they have probably secretly rehearsed it since that intoxicating moment on the Transfiguration Mountain. And now it is time to take the lead. Now it is time to act. Now it is time to make their move. Lord, will you grant each of us one to sit at your right and the other at your left when you come into your kingdom? At this time, you may feel free to add their implied thought which undoubtedly was, and don't forget, I asked you first. The amount of silence before Jesus responded is not recorded, nor are the facial expressions or the body language of Jesus. We don't know if he was uttering just a patient sigh or if he was restraining himself from wanting to slap these two off on the side of their heads. We only have his words. That's not for me to grant. All of James and John's scheming has just crashed into a glorious thud. Jesus also now has two disciples with completely deflated egos and ten disciples who are now full of jealous suspicions. And Jesus truly has a human relations nightmare all his own and in desperately in need of some crisis management. You just don't see Jesus acting so negatively, acting so harshly with his disciples. But the urgency of the situation is evident, as is the gravity of their error. It shall not be this way among you. Couple this with the earlier zinger, the one that Jesus said that it was not within his realm to grant the authority of who will sit next to him in his kingdom. And you are rapidly approaching the point where everything you thought you knew about following Jesus has just been turned on its ear. Not mine to grant. It shall not be so among you. James and John 
You don't know what you are asking. You need a remedial lesson in both the cup and the baptism. To review for many of you, any time that the scriptures mention the cup, it's bad. The cup is a reference to the wrath of God being poured out, most often on his enemies, occasionally poured out on his own disobedient and idle following people. The cup comes out anytime God's patience is tested. And you can tell and anticipate the results. The baptism is similar. It is a baptism of fire, of wrath, of anger from God. James and John, are you ready to endure that? Their ignorance is almost as galling to Jesus as is their bravado. But they don't get it. And the reason they don't get it is because they think that Jesus is just talking about them, when in fact, he is talking about himself. This is the part of Isaiah 53 that also confounded the Ethiopian eunuch when Philip tried to explain it to him. It says, and it confuses many who read that passage today. A God who suffers as part of his method and his mission? No, thank you. Because if I pledge my allegiance to a God who suffers, well, then what will that mean for me? The cup of suffering poured out? It was poured out on Jesus. Well, why do I want to be a part of that? And it is because that is the way that God has chosen to save the world and to save you through pouring out his cup of suffering upon his son, Jesus Christ. Back at the beginning of Mark's gospel, when Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan, it was also a time where Jesus said that it was time to fulfill all righteousness. In other words, he needed to be put in the place of sinners, a place with no honor, a place with no glory, no special privileges, even as he was declared at the beginning of Mark's gospel to be the very son of God. But not this time in the account, you would never know it. Unless, of course, you had paid attention to some of the triumphant passages and the conquests that Jesus has had throughout the Gospel of Mark. Jesus first comes on the scene in the Gospel of Mark, and he, one by one, begins to confront and to conquer one enemy after another, whether it be a disease, a demon, a whole flock of devils. Jesus confronts, Jesus conquers, Jesus is victorious. And sometimes he does it with nothing more than a word or a touch. The lesson for us is that this God in the flesh has power and authority beyond any other force. And God in the flesh knew what it would take to, to actually secure all of his creation in the victory over sin. He must submit himself into sin 
he must allow himself to have sin do its full dirty deed with him, completely overcoming him, and only then will he be able to turn the tables on the evil one. So Jesus dies. Jesus is buried. And Jesus is in a situation from which nobody should be expected to come back from unless you are the sinless son of God who willingly gave himself up for the sake of all those souls that he is now paying the ransom for. And to verify the fact that the strategy worked at the very end of Mark's gospel, as you know, Jesus arises victorious, rising from the dead, but not until he had first drained the cup of wrath to the bottom and endured all the punishment for all the sins for all the time of all people so that he could reemerge from the tomb victorious, alive, restored, and fully triumphant. And as a result, your sins are forgiven. Your eternal life is secure, and you can count on it. No, James and John, you didn't get it, what Jesus was talking about. But now, dear listeners, you can. There is no power, no sin, no demon, no devil, no ailment greater than that which has already been overcome and defeated by the cross of Christ. There is no one in all the forces of evil that cannot confront the resurrection from the dead. And so there is no soul that is beyond the reach of the love of God in Christ Jesus. And that includes you. God has conquered and has come to save you. This can be yours, especially by, t by coming in repentance and faith to the mercy of God the Father and to offer your admission that Christ is the one who has paid for your sins. Come and accept his forgiveness this day. Put your trust in Jesus, the Savior, who has defeated all your evil enemies. In Jesus' name, amen. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Amen. Let us come together to the Lord's throne of grace with a prayer our Lord Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. 
Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. As we celebrate 90 years of broadcasting the gospel of Jesus Christ, we'd love to send you a special free gift from our ministry to your home. As always, you can receive a copy of today's message. All you need to do is simply write to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. You may also call our Radio Church office at 414-462-9900. You've been listening to the Lutheran Radio Church service pre-recorded at Trinity Lutheran Church in Freistadt, Wisconsin. Today's music was provided by the Lutheran Radio Choir directed by Trudy Schmaltz. The message, Not So Among You, was given by the Reverend Robert Gable, a member at Emmanuel Lutheran Church in Brookfield, Wisconsin. Your liturgist was Reverend Jeffrey Miller of Berea Lutheran Church of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The Lutheran Radio Choir will now close the service with our closing hymn, 354, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. In the cross of Christ I glory. The preceding service was brought to you by the Lutheran Radio Church Service, broadcasting radio church services every Sunday morning since 1928. You may request a copy of this morning's sermon. Please pray for this important ministry. Prayerfully consider donating any amount the Lord enables you to give to this Christ-centered gospel ministry. Please mail your gift to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. That's the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. Thank you for your generous support of the Lutheran Radio Church Service, and may God bless your day.